in this video you will learn the best way to directly send and sign Google Docs with DocuSign. There's three ways that you can do it and I'm going to walk you through how to set each one up. And if you're completely new to the channel, my name is Sofian Saudi. I'm the founder of Solisan Consulting where we help service-based businesses streamline their sales and customer onboarding processes using technology and automation. If you want help with your DocuSign implementation, you can book a strategy call with me using the link down below. All right, so let's start with my favorite option, which is using Google Workspace add-on called eSignature Legacy. I prefer this option for two reasons. One, the the process starts from within Google Docs, so you actually get to review a document, make edits before you push a button to publish it to DocuSign when you're ready. And the second reason is because this add-in allows you to automatically apply the fields on your documents so that you don't have to drag and drop them manually each time uh, you want to do this. And if you're completely new to DocuSign and want to get up to speed quickly uh, with fields, templates and recipients, you need to go to this uh, to my DocuSign Mastery Cheat Sheet, download it, it's free, it'll help you get started with all that stuff. You'll find the link in the description uh, of this video or pinned in the comments just down below. So um, obviously I've already installed this add-on myself, so I don't have the install button, but just click on the install button. You'll find the link of this add-in in the description as, of the video as well. For some reason, I wasn't able to um, look for it from the um, Google add-on tool. So normally you can uh, click on get add-ons from your Google doc and then type in DocuSign. Actually, I can show you. Once you um, type in DocuSign, you don't have the one that you want. You don't want to download the one that's called DocuSign eSignature. You want to download the one that's called eSignature Legacy. And I know it's confusing and I don't know why, but this is this is what it is. So once you've clicked on installed, you'll be able to add your username and password for DocuSign. So just click on allow. It's, it's honestly, it's not complicated at all. Let's just say that I want to send this document for signature. What I'll need to do is I'll need to go to add-ons and then I'll select my e-signature legacy and click on sign with DocuSign. Now, it doesn't mean you're going to need to sign. Um, I think it's just the language here that's a bit unclear. Um, you're going to get a pop-up actually. So click on start and the pop-up will give you three options. The first option will be for you to sign. And so that's only you signing. So it'll allow you to drag and drop a signature field wherever you want to um, add something in a document. I'm not going to click on that, it's pretty standard. Then you've got the second option, which is you want to sign, but you also want to collect signatures from other recipients. So you click on that one um, if you want to apply your signature first. But then in most scenarios, you'll actually want to collect your signers' signatures before you countersign a document. So I'm going to click on that option myself, but you can use those three options. They work really well. And so from here, I'm brought to the DocuSign standard uh, screen. So if you've been docu using DocuSign for a while, you'll already be familiar with this. This is where you add the name and email of the recipients before adding the fields. So what I would normally need to do, right, is to add the name and email of the recipient click on next and then I'll need to scroll where I want my signature field and title field and date. You get the idea. You need to do this for all the signers. It's just time consuming. Who wants to do that? So um, the benefit of using this add-on is that you can apply templates very easily. So once you're brought to this screen, actually, instead of putting the name and email of your signers here, what you want to do is you want to apply a template. So the way you do this is you click on the three dots and then apply template and then you select the template that you want to apply on this document. So I've already got one that's here and I'm going to click on apply selected. Why do I want to click on apply template? Because after all, I want to keep this document. I don't want to send a templated document. The document changes every time. Yes, but by applying a dynamic template, then you're saving yourself the time it takes to drag and drop the signature fields as well as all the recipient workflow. So you see, I've just applied the template and then automatically I've got the placeholder for the borrower and a placeholder for the co-borrower. Oh yeah, because I haven't told you. So take a step back. This example that I'm using, it's a loan agreement and it needs to be signed by two people, the borrower and the co-borrower. You've got um, some variable information here that I've pushed to DocuSign and then I've applied my template. Right, so I've applied my template. Now I just need to enter the name and email for each of those recipients. And if I click on next, you can see that I still have the variable information here, although I've applied the template. And if I go to the next page, I've already got my fields. I don't need to apply them again. And then I can just hit send. 
Now you can tell me, yeah, but how do we know that you don't have, that this is not the document saved in the template? All right, that's that's fair. So I'm gonna go to my template and show you. So you remember that that's, that's the one that I've applied. So that's the loan agreement dynamic template for my Google Docs. And if I click on edit, you're gonna see that the document doesn't contain um, information about the signer. It, it's just standard information. And so the way DocuSign applies the fields automatically is by um, using a feature that's called Auto Place. So you can find the Auto Place uh, configuration if you select a field and then you go to location and then you can set up the Auto Place. It's just basically going to use a, um, a field, uh, sorry, a text on the document and use this as a landmark. And so then every time you upload a document that contains this particular word or string of words or whatever it is that you configure, the fields will be applied automatically. So that means that if I add um, extra pages um, here, if there's like 10 extra paragraphs, my signature fields will follow exactly um, the signature lines. Now, if you want to learn more about Autoplace, I strongly recommend you watch this video because it will show you exactly how to set it up and how dynamic templates work. And if you don't want to have to set up your own template yourself because it's time consuming, you can just email us at uh, template at solisign.com and send us a document and we'll give you a quote um, to get that uh, template built for you. So anyway, back to my envelope now when I'm ready, uh, I've checked that all, I've got all my fields, then I can just hit send and that's it. My, my envelope is sent. Now, let me show you the second way to send your Google Docs from DocuSign. With this method, the process starts from within DocuSign directly. I like this a little less because it gives you less, um, uh, it, you don't get a chance to actually review the document and make edits to the document from within DocuSign, but it does work. So what you want to do is you want to go to your DocuSign account and then you click on start now. And from here, you'll be um, able to upload the document. And so instead of selecting desktop, you just select Google Drive, and then you'll be able to um, look at the select the folder. So that's just going to show you exactly what you have in your Google Drive. So you'll just need to locate the file, click on upload, and that's it. You've got your document right into DocuSign. This option won't um, allow you to access to all documents in shared drive, but you'll still be able to apply dynamic templates. And so finally, the third option um, is to use the new DocuSign for Google Workspace add-in, which I do not like at all. Is that this one? Yes, it's this one. Because with this one, you actually need to do things, it just slows you down. So let me show you what I mean. Once you've installed that add-in, then you'll have a little pop-up to the, you'll have a little icon on the right. So then if I click on this, I need to click on next. So that's one click. And so I'm basically a lazy clicker. So then they are adding me as the um, as the recipient. I've never said that I needed to be added as a recipient. So I need to click on one more time. Then I need to click on add recipient. Then I need to add the name and email for each of those people here. So I'm just going to go with, uh, just going to go with these random emails. And then I need to click on next. And then I need to enter an email message. I mean, then finally, the DocuSign screen comes up and that's only when, that's only then that I can actually apply my template. So if you've already got a template, why would you waste all that time? Because what I want to do at the end of the day is I don't care about that person here because I'm going to need to delete it. Um, and then I'm going to need to click on apply template and then I'm going to need to select my template. So it's just a waste of time. I don't like this Google workspace add-on at all. I actually hate it, but I still love Docs. If you like this video and you want to learn more about how you can streamline your sales and customer onboarding operations, don't forget to like and subscribe and leave a comment if you have any questions about any of the things that I've just showed you now. And I'll see you in the next video. Ciao.